Okay, here you, here you, here you. Let's uh, bring the uh, village board uh, uh, meeting um, to order, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. to increase the term of elected officials from two to three years. I'm interested to know what resident approached you and asked you to do this. Is it, in your opinion, healthy that our village continues to pay Mr. Lois $300,000 a year, twice the salary of the Wisconsin governor, when Foxconn is a failure and Intel has passed on us? Was it safety you had in mind when you relocated Sean McFarland, a handicapped person, and his young family into a house where the toilet emptied into the basement? Were you protecting the welfare of local business owners when you decided to block the entrance to the Erickson's trucking business and then ticketed them for trespassing when they set foot on their own property? And morals, how moral was it when you tried to tear down and evict the Cruisinger's house and barn for Foxconn and force them to file an injunction against you. in incentives during a real estate boom creating tids that won't fund the village for decades and now you think you deserve longer terms in office and you do this with no input no discussion two weeks notice and I'm saying no I will actively be pursuing your term limits to two years Okay, uh, can we hear from uh, Teresa uh, Villar? Or do you pronounce it Villar? Villar. Name and address, please. Can you hear me? That's good. Okay. My name is Teresa Villar. I live in Sturdivant at 1523 92nd Street, Unit 113, um, 53177. <clears throat> 
I'm here commenting tonight because I am running for Racine Unified School Board, District 1, and I just wanted to have the opportunity to introduce myself to you all. My district does not encompass all of Mount Pleasant, but it has a pretty good section of it. So District 1 includes all of Sturdivant, all of Elmwood Park, and then Wards 16 to 23 of Mount Pleasant, which is all of Mount Pleasant south of Durand Avenue from 94 all the way over to the lake. Um, <clears throat> I have enjoyed having the opportunity to connect with quite a few voters and I appreciate the care and concern that so many people have for our Racine Unified School District even if they don't have a direct contact with the district. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I was a high school teacher for 15 years and then changed careers and went to Marquette Law School. I'm now an attorney at the Racine District Attorney's Office and I prosecute all the cases where kids have to be removed from the home due to abuse or neglect. Mm. So those are the county's CHIPS cases. I've been doing that for about five years. Before I joined the DA's office, I was a guardian ad litem for Racine County and advocated for the best interests of children in family cases, guardianships, CHIPS cases, and other matters. Um, my husband and I have also been foster parents for Milwaukee County for a number of years, and we adopted two children. Both of those children both attend Racine Unified Schools. So I'm also very invested in the school system as a parent, um, and I would love to have the opportunity to serve on the board. Some of the issues that are near and dear to my heart, both professionally and as a foster parent, I've learned a lot about trauma and the impact trauma has on the developing brain of children. As everyone is aware, a number of Racine Unified Schools struggle with some very significant behavior issues. I believe a lot of those behavior issues are driven by trauma, the trauma that the kids in those schools are exposed to on a daily basis. I'm advocating for increased mental health support for those students so that they can stay in school and so the other students who are not experiencing those behavior issues can feel safe in school. I'm also um, advocating for increased trauma-informed training for faculty and staff and I've heard from a number of faculty that they would welcome increased training just to help them to learn how to better work with these students um, and again to help them to stay in school so they don't end up suspended or expelled. <clears throat> I also, and one of, that's one of the reasons I'm here tonight, is because I feel strongly that I really want to listen to all the stakeholders and constituents for Racine Unified. I believe that our city and county cannot be successful without a really vibrant, successful school district. And it's going to take all of us working together to do that. So I want to listen to the people in all the different areas of my district to hear the concerns that you all are dealing with. Um, I wanna listen to faculty, to parents, to students, to the business owners, to community members, all of whom have a stake in a healthy, vibrant school district. And I want us all to help to work together to meet some of the challenges that Racine Unified has. I also believe Racine Unified has some real strong points that we don't hear enough about that we can really build on. Um, <clears throat> to improve the overall performance of the school district. So thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Teresa. Just one quick question. Um, how long are the terms uh, for the school board position uh, that you're running for? There are three years. Huh. Wasn't well, that interesting? No. Um, can we hear from John Scott, please? Hello, I'm John Scott. I live at 5333 Lathrop Avenue in Mount Pleasant. I'm here to speak against the decision you made to have an ordinance for three-year term limits. I'm here to speak to what I think the state law tells us about that decision. The state of Wisconsin, as you know, the state of Wisconsin has laws which govern the operations of municipalities, including Mount Pleasant. That law requires two years of office for village trustees 
and two years is the term for the great majority of Wisconsin villages, and by the way, U.S. congressmen and state representatives also have two-year terms. Let's think about why two years was originally selected as a term of office. Thinking about it, we can see that there are times when voters become unhappy with a trustee or want a change of government. In that case, one year is a long time to wait as many decisions and can be made during that one year. It is unlikely that voters unhappy with the village board would favor three-year terms over two-year terms and one never knows when such dissatisfaction will occur. Hence, the state standard by Wisconsin statute for many years has been a two-year term in office for village board members. You chose to use to create a charter ordinance to change the term of office from two years to three years by a two-thirds vote of the board rather than by referendum of, of the voters as specifically allowed in the law. Notice the law requires two-thirds and not a simple majority thereby making this change more difficult. I think that's for a reason. Initiating a referendum rather than passing an ordinance would have allowed voters to decide how long you should be in office when next elected. I believe you made the wrong decision. I think voters should have had a chance to weigh in on that choice. They may not want this board to have three-year terms in office in the future. When the term limit change was enacted, the village president stated, President stated that if anyone was unhappy with the new terms, they could force a referendum. Following that suggestion and the law, a group of citizens circulated a petition for a referendum in Mount Pleasant and have collected a number of signatures more than the required 7% voters in the last election. I think it's significant that the state law recognizes a special case in permitting a referendum with only 7% of the voters rather, rather than the usual 15% required for forcing other forms of referenda. I think that when the two-year limit was passed, the legislature certainly realized that having a board vote on its own future terms was hazardous and unusual. They wanted to clear the way and make it easier for citizen participation in the creation of the charter law and extension of terms. I supported the petition for a referendum, and I look forward to the decision of the voters in what is expected to be the August primary. Thank you. Can we hear from Joseph Cushing? Joseph Cushing. 4045 Sheridan Road, Mount Pleasant, 53403. My first reaction in hearing that the trustees have voted to extend their terms was, how can they do that? It doesn't sound legal. However, we found that it is within the law, and they apparently said, if the voters do not like it, they can petition for a referendum. I have in the past participated in several referendums, and this was by far the easiest. Probably eight of every nine people we caught, eight of every 10 people we contacted signed our petition. <clears throat> These people agreed, we talked with, agreed that this is a strange thing to do in the midst of a Foxconn situation or any time, in fact. So we have the signatures, let's have the vote, and we look forward to the upcoming meeting of the canceled Foxconn explanation Let's hope that this one is also not canceled. Thank you. Okay, can we hear from Kelly Galler? Okay. Good evening, Kelly Gallagher, 4622 Nolwa Drive. Um, over the last 15 years, I have circulated a lot of petitions. Uh, Congress, Governor, Supreme Court, ones that require a lot of door knocking and a lot of signature gathering. And it's not easy. People are busy, they aren't always friendly, and right now they really, really dislike politicians and politics. Sorry. <laughs> and bundled up in ski pants and a parka, knocking on doors in the snow. Uh, during a pandemic is not how I plan to spend my February. What I want you to know was that the people in Mount Pleasant 
were so incensed and angry by your rush to vote through term extensions that I wish I had a quarter, just a quarter, for every person who grabbed my clipboard out of my hand to sign before I even had finished explaining why I was there. I'm serious. The guy with the Trump flag signed, the woman with the Black Lives Matter signed, uh, old people, young families, basically if they were home, they signed. I guess my rate was a little bit better than Joe's because I'm a little more um, convincing. Snowbirds mailed in their petitions from Florida. One volunteer just parked his car with a sign and people drove up and signed. Some of your friends signed. They used words like arrogant, pompous, out of touch, and a few I cannot say. The literally hundreds of people I talked to said, without exception, is that you work for them and they decide how long you should serve. And I agree which is why our goal of collecting 1,200 signatures was completed in two weeks, not the six to seven weeks that we thought it might take. They were the easiest signatures I have ever collected by far. Today we submitted 1,282 signatures on 152 individual petition sheets to force a referendum vote on the extension of terms in office. And I'd like to thank all of the volunteers and everyone who circulated petitions for getting out there during the cold and the snow. You just made such a difference. Included are the signatures of three former trustees and one former village president. Dozens of volunteers circulated the petition in their neighborhood, at church, and among their friends. I urge you to respect the voice of these residents, knowing that we could have collected many, many more. I don't have a lot of faith that there will not be attempts to disqualify or nullify this petition, so I ask you to do what you have seldom done before, make me wrong. Okay, is there anybody wishing to speak that has not signed up? Um, last call. Oh, you're waving your hand? Yeah. Hi, I'm Carol Teal, uh, 4500 Pleasant Trail Drive, Mount Pleasant. Um, I'd just like to say that, and I do work here, I will admit that, but I'm a Mount Pleasant resident. And I think it's great how people are involved in the community and you need to be, but I did notice one thing, that while we're grousing about the fact that we want to extend the terms, we don't have people who even run for the positions. And that gets to be a problem. And I have seen people come into these positions and they have a year to kind of acclimate. And then the next year they're starting to feel like we're getting something going and boom they have to go out and campaign again to come in. So I mean, I've just observed that as being a resident myself, that it's always that way that we want to, you know, say, hey, we should do this or that, but yet we're not running for these positions and we're not in them to do it. And I, um, I personally feel our board does a good job. I'm not just saying that, but they're not easy positions. But I think we all know that. So I just want to say from my standpoint, I just see that there's, you know, I invited some people to, um, they commented we don't have people of color on the board. And I said, well, maybe you should apply. Well, I can't. I've got seven felonies on my record. So I mean, we do try to get, you know, I know, I know, they came to a meeting, yes. But you know, I, we're not averse to that, but we just, you just don't get the people who want to participate and be part of it. Oh, I understand that. Not gonna have back and forth. No, I understand that, but I just wanted to, give my opinion as a, a resident as well. So thank you. Thank you, Carol. Okay, uh, with that, we'll close public comment and we'll move on to uh, consent agenda. Trustee Hewitt. Mr. President, I make a motion to adopt the items on the uh, uh, consent agenda. Second. So I hear a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries.
Let's move down to uh, finance, legal, and licensing. Uh, we've got three uh, items, actually, and I think that we're going to just kind of take them all collectively because out of these three items, I think that there's going to be one motion. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve Resolution 1-2022, authorizing entry into the Voluntary Compact of Intergovernmental Cooperation Council for Racine County and its municipalities along with the associated agreement and bylaws. Second. second. So I hear a motion and multiple seconds. Um, One part each. Maybe you want to speak to this? Uh, this is something that uh, we were hoping to hear uh, from either the county executive or, uh, or MT or, or, or one of his staff. This was first brought up at the last COW meeting. It's an agreement basically um, that the county is driving and that every municipality with, within the county would be part of just as a way to make sure um, ideas and information can be shared. Everyone can be on the same page as far as uh, from a municipal perspective and the county executive uh, certainly supports it. Um, I believe President DeGroot supports it. Milwaukee ha County has a similar type group um, in my time representing cities there, uh, my perspective was it was uh, worthwhile. Um, just so, you know, you may not agree with the municipality next to you or across the county from you, but at least you hear their perspectives on things. Uh, I can tell you uh, in 2020, uh, early 2020, um, it, it was valuable um, just to and I sat in on some of those meetings um, just to hear all the mayors or village presidents and the county executive talking about what they were doing as a response to COVID because it was so new. You know, I'm talking about March of 2020 and everyone, you know, you hear a different news story every, every day about what the best practices are. So uh, that's just something that sticks out in my mind of having I think the value of having this is obvious, but that's a specific example of the ability to convene a group um, that can, you know, you can hear what's going on in other municipalities. So these are um, pretty standard agreements uh, that I don't think there's going to be any edits to. Uh, I think everyone's going to, I haven't heard, maybe the village president has, but it seems like there's support throughout the county. So once you uh, adopt this, then Mount Pleasant will um, officially signal that it is uh, wants to join. Go ahead, Rob. Yes, I'd like to echo what, what Attorney Chris Smith has uh, 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 outlined the support for this intergovernment agreement. We are all part of the same county. When the residents are driving or living, they don't see once you cross the road where you are. We are all joined by the, uh, by the hips, and uh, I think a uh, few of us were also part of some initial discussion, at least, you know, at the, at the I go back to like 2018, thanks to the leadership of the resilient community. And, uh, and since that time, the leadership of our president, the administrator, and the, they all have been meeting. So I can only see good thing come out of that. When people, when the leadership talk, you solve the problem. We don't have a unique problem. Everyone is faced with the almost the same uh, uh, challenges, whether you're in Mount Pleasant or Stuttgart or Caledonia or uh, anywhere in the county. <coughs> so I totally support that. And I hope that uh, the other municipalities who don't have that also uh, look to the leadership that has been provided by the leaders of the Racine County, all the municipalities, and take it from there. Thanks, Rob. Go ahead, John. I just wanted to make sure, even though we don't have a large audience left, I'm going to read the names of all the communities in case you're not familiar with them, and those people who may be listening or online. City of Burlington, Town of Burlington, Village of Caledonia, Town of Dover, Village of Elmwood Park, the village of Mount Pleasant, the village of North Bay, the town of Norway, the city of Racine, village of Raymond, village of Rochester, village of Sturdivant, village of Union Grove, town of Waterford, village of Waterford, village of Windpoint, 
and the village of Yorkville. All of those are signed on to this and will be participants. I'm not sure why Husher wasn't on there. Shouldn't Husher be on there? Pardon me? Husher? <laughs> Trustee Hewitt makes a good point. Um, uh, with the 17 municipalities that he just uh, read off, uh, to have a unanimous agreement uh, from all of them, thinking that this is a, a good idea, and a way to uh, uh, have a, a little bit more effective uh, communication uh, and uh, provide a format uh, for the various municipalities to uh, share mutual concerns on whatever the topic of the day is. Um, it's uh, this is something that's kind of intended to replace uh, what uh, the county used to call the heads of government meetings um, that were usually uh, held at uh, at Ives Groves, and you know part of the uh, part of the uh, attraction of this is that uh, these uh, meetings uh, will be on a like a every other month sort of thing unless. There's something that uh, needs more discussion and uh, speak of the devil, uh, here he comes. Uh, it's, <laughs> instead, of, instead of me trying to cover for the uh, county executive, uh, why don't you just uh, come on up and give us uh, your thoughts? Uh, because uh, we're, over there. We, we are dealing with uh, your business uh, issue right now. Uh, and we've got a motion on the floor and we're, we're looking for you to bring this home. So I'm reminded by the, the John Lennon song, uh, Nobody Told Me There'd Be Days Like These. Um, and I think we all can say, as a county, substitute days for years, nobody would told us there'd be years like this in terms of COVID. So this is something that I've always wanted to, to, be, to start as a, a, um, as a county. Uh, and now that we're coming out of COVID, this is the time to do it. What I would say is that we looked as, as, a, as a county, um, what are the best models out there for intergovernmental cooperation and really starting to um, tackle heavy lifts um, intermunicipal wise, um, whether that's shared services, whether that's infrastructure, um, whether that's cybersecurity, whether that's you know body cameras, and collectively, how do we as a voice lobby the state of Wisconsin in particular in terms of funding and, and statutes and laws. And if the town of Dover, who's about 3,000 people, does it on their own, they're probably not gonna have enough leverage if a intergovernmental cooperative council of 200,000 people um, can come to together and collectively lobby for policies and procedures and, and things of that nature. Um, what's different about this is also that to get this started, the county would take the lead, but I, best intergovernmental cooperative councils um, are not led by the county. It's led by a heads of government from another municipality. So when we looked at all, all this, we looked at, um, we came away with two models, one in Colorado and then one right in our own backyard in Milwaukee County. Um, so we, we looked at both those models, did a little bit of a blend, but this is a state statute um, that has to be approved by boards. Proud to say that most boards, or all boards that have, have um, looked at this that I've been before have, have passed this or are in the process of passing this. So that's the Intergovernmental Cooperative Council. Um, and finally, what I would say, it really helps with the informal um, communication and relationships that can build. We learned from the mayor of South Milwaukee and Glendale, I'm sorry, Oak Creek and Glendale, one was a conservative, more conservative leaning, one was more progressive leaning, and they became really good friends and they were able to establish those relationships outside um, and come together collectively on nonpartisan issues that affect our, our taxpayers and our community. So that's my um, spiel. I think you saw the PowerPoint, and um, I would um, turn it back over to you, Mr. President, for questions or comments or concerns or pushback. Any thoughts for the county executive? No, I think it's a great idea, and I think that this also may be a follow-up to what happened east of the interstate out at Wingspread. Now this is going to include the entire county. 
Correct. Yep. Anybody else? Very pleased for your leadership, Mr. County Executive. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it's a long process, but I'm glad that you and all the leaders of all the municipality could uh, bring it home. I think I, I can't see anything uh, negative about that because the more the people that talk, like you said, everyone have probably have a, a, a small village or the town could have the same issues as so is in the power of the uh, 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 the masses and the population, and uh, I think it's a great idea. And uh, my only comment would be, thank you. It should have been done yesterday, but it's never too late. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. What uh, the county executive mentioned, I just wanted to reiterate, was, you know, in as much as uh, the county is leading on putting this initiative together. It, it really is intended for the municipalities to be to be driving it, mm -hmm. and one of the ways that the uh, municipalities will be able to share in that is the uh, uh, the meetings of which I was uh, bringing up uh, just before the executive uh, came in. Um, the meetings are, are are kind of designed to be spread apart into the the different communities. And so that, uh, that, that gives each uh, community a little source of pride that they're hosting a, uh, a county-wide meeting uh, in their uh, municipality. Um, and it's, just a, it's, it's just a cool way to, to uh, bring out uh, some collaboration on the important items of the day that impact us all. Go ahead. Yeah, if I may, I think my only uh, request would be not the minutes of the, the meeting, but I think uh, as the board member and as the, the public, maybe if not every month, but from the time to time, we should get a feedback on, you know, mm -hmm. what's going on in this monthly the meeting on the you know, higher level. For sure. I'm not asking for the minutes of the meeting, but in you know, a higher level that yes. last three months, you know, we tackled these issues or these were the challenges and, you know, how we're doing that. I think it'd be a good idea. That, that's a great point. And also these meetings will be publicly noticed and uh, minutes will be taken and the media will be also notified. But um, report back because I, I don't know, maybe there'll be interest for, for people to go to these meetings. That would be great. I would love that, but if not, we certainly will have to report back to each of the municipalities. As, as I said, my, my suggestion is not about the minutes of the meeting because the minutes are okay. Yes. The resolution, you know, like a, okay, we had this, you know, a bigger issue, higher level, exactly level. This is how we dealt and kind of thing, something like that. Perfect. Yep. Executive Delgrave, you're you're certainly uh, welcome to. Uh, stick around and help fill out the chambers. So. I, I have a seven <laughs> o'clock, but thank you so much for that. You want to stay for at least for the vote? Of, I, this? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I just had a quick question, Jonathan. Are, it says that the first annual meetings in May, I think it is. Are, what's your timeline once you get all through all the communities for your first meeting? Yeah, so we look at May at when the new, um, after the spring election, when boards are seated, and then look at that probably one of those Thursdays in May. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, so the question before the, uh, the table in front of us is uh, the resolution 1-2022 uh, authorizing entry into the voluntary compact of intergovernmental cooperation council for Racine County and its municipalities. And uh, we'll uh, uh, roll call please. Eastman? Aye. Clausen? Aye. Hewitt? Aye. Washburn? Aye. Batia? Aye. Anastasio? Aye. DeGroote? Aye. So by unanimous consent, uh, <laughs> it's Thank approved. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you John. And all your other board members, too. Okay, let's move on to uh, uh, item D under community development. We have discussable, uh, discussion and possible action regarding a development agreement with the Endeavor Development in TID number five. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve a development agreement with Endeavor Development in TID five as presented. Uh, and when I say as presented, we had a presentation in the call meeting. Last Second. Time. So I have motion and a second by uh, uh, Hewitt. 
Uh, Mr. Claude, uh, you'd like to speak to this? Sure. Good evening, uh, Mr. President, trustees. Again, this is a uh, Endeavor development. It is a, a spec uh, warehouse, 204,000 square feet, roughly estimated value at $16 million. Uh, again, this would not happen had not TID-5 been in place and the infrastructure we did in TID-5. Now that there's sewer up there in the northern area, opens up a lot of opportunities for a lot of different developments. So again, uh, Endeavor is, uh, it's a very simple uh, development agreement, it's gone to our attorney. Uh, it, it's, it's really no issue to the village at all. Um, uh, we're gonna extend our sewer down to, from International down to Louis Thorne at the end of the, the frontage road, but other than that, Endeavor pays for all that as well. So it's a play for pay for play pay sort of. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, the village is not doing anything. Pardon me? It's a pay goal, yes. Yeah. Any thoughts for Claude? No. And this is something that was uh, brought up to us uh, in Cow, uh, you know, a few sessions back. So um, uh, regarding the uh, development uh, agreement for uh, approval, uh, TID 5 Endeavor Development Agreement, roll call, please. Eastman? Aye. Clausen? Aye. Hewitt? Aye. Washburn? Aye. Batia? Aye. Anastasio? Aye. DeGroot? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, let's move mm -hmm. down to uh, uh, personnel issues. We've got discussion, possible motion regarding the creation of the community engagement manager position. Um, motion, please. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to approve the creation of the community engagement manager position. Second. So I hear a motion and a second. Um, Carol, is this something that you were going to be speaking to? Actually, well, let's move over to Sam. Mr. President, members of the Village Board, uh, this is a new position um, create for a community engagement manager who would uh, report to myself uh, as a part of the community development department. Um, you know, we had a brief conversation with when this was at Cow a couple of weeks ago, and I put a lot of thought into the last two weeks and how I wanted to continue to respond to, uh, I think, some of Trustee Batia's um, good points about, you know, this is not the first time a community engagement, a proactive outreach position has been in front of the board in the last couple of years. What I think makes this proposal different and worthy of your consideration tonight is one, it's placed within the community development department. Um, really placing it at the crux of our work proactively outreaching citizens. You know, we're oftentimes the ones who are doing parks and rec outreach through George's work or planning outreach through a lot of Robin's work, you know, the, either legal notices or informal kind of public meetings. Um, we are also in the community development department, the ones who are actively reaching out to citizens on a yearly basis through the assessment contract with Dan and his crew, as well as we're oftentimes the people in your home as you pull building permits and electrical permits and plumbing permits and you know, we're, we're out there to go and inspect you. So um, we think this position, the different tack we took with this position was to place it within community development and that proactive outreach arm really set this person up to be more cleanly integrated into those efforts um, moving forward and being more proactive. So. I think that's from a high level what we want to do. Their day-to-day -day responsibilities will help us from everything from tax increment financing work um, and both the communications and outreach that goes into that and dealing with the business community and developers to a more proactive outreach to our residents, you know, things like community letters and community notifications, both in social media, email, and you know, mail when appropriate, and um, in person as well at certain events and things like that. Um, this position will also um, help the internal kind of branding and communication side of the village as well. So making sure that all the village staff, you know, we have a PD on the other wing, we have DPW in a separate building. So making sure all those guys, as well as South Shore on the east side of the village, are apprised of some of the inner goings on that, you know, what happened at board last night, some of the agendas coming up, things like that. So staff can keep track of that as well. And then finally help with some of our internal um, kind of branding and um, you know design guidelines and community kind of outreach on that side to make sure that we're providing a consistent voice to the village. So we think this position is um, you know 
for lack of a better term, the best version of this before you yet, and we think this is the best permanent solution for this type of work. I think it's, it's a need in the village, and I think it's something that uh, a lot of our adjacent communities are already doing, particularly in Milwaukee and Kenosha County, um, who we compete against when we attract residents. So I think this it will be a, a great add and something that we can build on in the long run um, as part of in the community development department. So with that, I'll happily answer any questions. Obviously, Carol and Mary are here from the HR side. Claude is here as well uh, in front of you. He will work with this position on the TID side as well. So hopefully it makes sense and you approve it. If you do, we'll post it tomorrow. <coughs> I think your analysis is very well thought out. Yeah. But go ahead. Rob's got it. Sam, I'm, I'm the one I think uh, raised some concern last time, and I came to the, uh, the meeting pretty open-minded. Uh, I still have some concern, but uh, I appreciate your, uh, your explanation. I think you justify it better than anyone else has. I still am not 100% that we have gone through this road, at least last cow meeting you represented as a communication. And we have, we have had two attempts here and I haven't, I haven't seen or observed or experienced any better communication. That was my concern. And maybe Carol can add and, uh, but I think uh, I see your point, I see the need from your point of view but from the village point of view, maybe I like to hear more from my colleagues, maybe especially from uh, uh, Trustee Anna Marie Clausen, because the last position we had was uh, was on the Tourism Commission under the communication, and uh, so as of now, I am I am still looking for a little bit more to help me decide. But what you have uh, expressed, the explanation, it goes a long way. Thank you. And if I could just respond to that um, with a, a slight comparison to our Parks and Recreation Manager, George. Um, you all put a little trust in us, both in the strategic planning to reorganize parks under community development, which is not something that a lot of communities do. Typically, it's under public works. And that was a decision that you all made, and I think has really worked out. But George has really had to build up kind of a a department from scratch. Recreation side was good, and Brittany had been doing that year-to-year -year work, but kind of the parks, maintenance side, the physical aspect, and really building it to a collaborative office. Um, you know, that was a part-time position before that we all know had its challenges, so I think George has done a great job, and we would look to carry that type of mentality in terms of, like, building up um, this person in the department and their office of work um, in the long run. So I think George is probably the most close comparison to a recent hire that you've made in the tact that we would try to kind of build their roles and responsibilities. I would like to say that um, I have seen a need for somebody to do that external communication anyway for quite a while. And it's, you know, we've had some stabs at it that haven't been too successful. And I think that this is and housing it in your area where the action is going on in a way, the, the kind of the visible things, the development, I think that that is a, a good idea and I support, I support the addition of this position. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, just a quick comment. Um, I do support it and I, I think that the word communication becomes complicated in this position. Mm -hmm. This position, based on what I've read uh, in the job description, as well as in Sam's comments, this is gonna be a very busy person. And a lot of day-to-day -day moving, changing, and as long as we can see from a, at least a public improvement standpoint that we're getting uh, our website is being taken care of a little better. We've got pertinent, viable, fresh information on it, not from 2019 on the front page. Th that satisfies the, you know, media communication. But it sounds to me like you also are looking to have this internal tool as well. 
um, to keep the system moving internally very well for you. So I'm willing to, to certainly support it because Sam's telling us we, he needs the help. We, need, we know we need the help in the communications area and maybe sending it over to the tourism side wasn't really, you know, tourism is only part of what goes on in this village. And to keep everybody up on new housing developments and new commercial developments and business developments and TID developments, as well as just the parks and rec, I mean, it's just so all encompassing. So I think that potentially with the right person in charge, Sam, that's gonna be you. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I think we really owe it to you to give you the opportunity to grow the position, craft it, mold it. Um, we're going to let you know how we think it's doing because of what we'll see, right, externally. And here. And here. Pardon me? Yeah. What we'll see and here. And here, yes, exactly, Dave. Thank you. So anyway, I will stop uh, pro pontificating. And, uh, but I, I'm going to support it because I, I think there is a need. We've got to figure out how it works in Mount Pleasant and Sam has got a good handle on how to do that. Uh, Anna Marie. Some of you were here several years back when we had Civic Affairs Committee and the committee at that time, one of the goals was to be going out and contacting businesses and asking for input and the communication that way and then trying to develop a system where we would track information whether it was on the computer or whatever and that that really didn't uh, wasn't quite successful so then it was lapsed a bit and when the tourism commission was formed and that was supposedly one of the goals was to provide communication, contact with the website, et cetera. And there just wasn't one person put in charge. And so ultimately that wasn't, that was a failure as well. This here with a full description, uh, position description, you've got assigned accountability uh, it's much more clearly defined. It'll be a person overseen by a supervisor. Much better to have success with this. So I think this is the right. way to go. Right, I would agree, Anna Marie. Better set up for success. Chris. I'll just, <coughs> since Maureen isn't here, and she sometimes refers to me as acting administrator when she's gone, I'll say what I think she'd say right now, which is, you know, clearly everyone agrees there's a need for this. Um, and Rom spoke at Cow in here that we've tried this a couple times before and it didn't work, yeah. and that's true. But, and Sam brings up brilliant points, but the main thing that I see here is both times we've tried, we kind of created a different position and added the communication thing onto it. Okay, yeah. the first time was to try this tourism manager and communications and we'll Whatever. share, and it didn't work. Yeah. It's too big of a job. The second time was, you know, it was someone in the clerk's office yeah. who had all her other duties, you know, and then oh, also do communication stuff on social media. And I think she did as good as she could do, but she had all her other duties and we're seeing now, and I think we all recognize Nancy said it, I totally agree. This person's gonna be very busy. This is not a, a position that can be, you know, shared with other duties. Like right. I'm gonna be, you know, um, a plumbing inspector and I'm also gonna do the communications, <laughs> okay? I, I think that's the huge primary difference here. And we're kind of saying as a village, we recognize that there's a need for this. And now we're finally kind of going all in to make someone completely responsible. It's their only job, not they have all these other duties and also try to do communications as well. So to me, that's the huge difference between our attempts in the past and this proposal. 
If the plumbing inspector also did communications, yeah. we'd probably know a lot more about plumbing than we want. <laughs> yeah. Well said. But if I may... Uh, Last word. I think, again, as I said, I came with open mind, and uh, but uh, the explanation given by Sam and Chris and everyone is very reassuring. So I'm going to reluctantly put my support, but I'm going to put my the faith into the management and uh, your position, but the 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 position, uh, the uh, what's called the uh, the summary, that still bothered me because it starts from this position manager the village's communication, the position develops and design contents to enhance the village's communication. Again, we've been through that road. So, but I leave it to you. But like Sam said and. They're a good example like you gave for uh, George, and uh, so I'm going to put my, my faith and hopefully watch how it develops. And uh, if it's good, great. If not, then I, I would probably would raise my voice again maybe at the budget time. I think yeah. a, a wise former U.S. president said, trust but verify. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, with, with that in mind, uh, roll call, please. Eastman? Aye. Lawson? Aye. Hewitt? Aye. Washburn? Aye. Batia? Aye. Anastasio? Aye. DeGroote? Aye. The motion carries. Um, so I think uh, the only thing we've got left is uh, reports. Uh, under uh, reports uh, number seven, uh, announcements and or recognition of village residents, employees, memorials, and non-political community events. Anybody got anything? Nothing from the just, justice. Mr. President, yeah. just to reiterate, or again, um, next week, Tuesday, March oh, 22nd, we have a joint meeting with the county board, 5 o'clock at Ives Grove, an update on TID 5. Or it should approximately be about an hour. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, one last motion. Move for adjournment. Second, Mr. President. Motion and a second. To all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We stand adjourned.